Yeah, so this car has quite a bit of power and um, it was a full-time job when you're driving it just to handle the thing. Uh, manual steering, manual brakes. It had the original monoleaf uh, leaf spring in the back, uh, coils up front. Um, it was pretty squishy and just whenever you would really lay into it, it was a handful just to keep it going straight. You know, these cars were light. They, um, the suspension was really soft on them and they were, as some have said, one of the worst suspension come out, probably maybe the second worst <laughs> from factory. And this car is so original with all the floor pans, everything. There's never been rust repair done on this car. And we really want to maintain as much originality of it as we can while making it safer and handle better. To start the installation of the Ride Tech suspension, we need to get the car safely supported off the ground. Make sure to support the caliper so the brake line is not compromised. Next, we're going to remove the lower arm, spindle, and brakes in one piece. So loosen the nuts on the tie rods, upper ball joints, and lower control arm. Now we can remove the bracket for the front strut rod mount. We used a grinder and an air chisel to remove the rivets and allow the entire assembly to be removed. The upper control arm is next, and we'll start by unbolting the shock. The shroud that covers the spring pocket is also removed, as well as the upper control arm and the upper shock mount. The new RideTech lower arm mounts use existing mounting holes on the chassis to provide correct location. You will need to drill a few extra holes because we bolt this in super strong, resulting in significant decrease in front chassis flexing, which you will feel the first corner you turn into. The new lower strong arm tubular control arms mount using our low friction Delrin bushings for smooth, squeak free operation and offer multiple positions for altering the camber adjustment range. The upper control arms mount in the original location but are definitely not original geometry. Improved caster and camber are achieved with the combination of lower and upper control arms, as well as the all new tall spindles and steering linkage. The RideTech spindles provide a raised pin, which lowers the car while maintaining travel. We also utilize corrected steering arms to optimize Ackerman and limit bump steer to under 30 thousandths of an inch through five inches of wheel travel. When mounting the spindle to the new arms, don't forget the cotter pins. The calipers can then be mounted. The RideTech system is compatible with the original disc brakes or a wide range of aftermarket options. Next, we can drill the inner fender to accept the new RideTech upper shock mounts. With the coilover set according to the instructions, we will be able to fine tune the ride height with the spring adjuster after the installation is finished. The system can use either coilover or RideTech shockwave air suspension in the same mounting configuration. Both offer 24 clicks of valve adjustment to dial in the ride quality and handling. To finish up the front suspension, we'll drill and install another front chassis brace crossbar and the front sway bar. We include billet aluminum sway bar mounts with low friction squeak-free bushings to provide maintenance-free quiet operation.
the Ridetech system retains the original steering box or works with popular upgrades, but it uses a new drag link and tie rods that are engineered to work together with the rest of the front suspension. This combination provides great steering feel while eliminating the ill effects of improper steering geometry, often caused by rack and pinion conversions where space for proper mounting location is problematic. With the front suspension all finished up, we can fine-tune the ride height and get to work on the install of the rear forelink. We'll get started on the rear by removing the shocks, the lower leaf spring mounts, and the leaf springs themselves. Make sure you have the rear end supported when doing this. The brake lines also need to be loosened and moved out of the way so we can place the upper four-link cradle into position. Again, we use existing holes in the chassis to align the new cross member, making it super easy to find where new holes must be drilled. We will use the U-bolts to firmly and completely mount the cross member. And then mark the holes needed for the other bolts. The cross member will then be removed and the nut zerts will be installed. We provide the nut zert tool for this job. The final install of the upper four-link cross member is a simple bolt-in after the nut certs are installed. Our lower control arms utilize the original leaf spring mounting locations. But we significantly increase the strength by adding in a new brace. The bracket for the lower control arm bolts on where the lower leaf spring plate once resided.
all the rear control arms utilize our R-joint rod ends with composite-lined low-friction pivots. This provides super smooth, quiet, bind-free operation through a wide range of motion. The rear bar mount provides several options to adjust for your needs. The upper mounts are placed into the new cross member. After we clean up the U-bolt length, we can locate the upper arm mounts on the rear end housing. There are detailed instructions with the kit that show exactly how to make sure your rear end is located properly. Then, you just have to weld on the brackets and bolt the upper arms in place. With the coilovers or shockwaves installed, you are ready to finalize the ride height, set the alignment, and take on the road. That four link really tightens up the rear end on it. Whenever you're kind of getting in on it, it doesn't want to whip around left and right. It, it goes and as long as you can get traction, you're going to be going straight. Uh, and the curves, the coilovers make such a dramatic improvement. There's hardly any body roll. It stays parallel to the ground. Uh, the traction plus all the, the handling of it is it's phenomenal.